Surprised she sits you like a truck, she doesn't know she knocks you out. Where's Bud? I'm just sitting to you. Do you know what? Do you know what? I wish I could go back to my Bud. Because you know what? Yeah, Spice is horrible. In every marketplace, some products are designed to be better than others. They have extra features, extra benefits, or extra ingredients that make them stand out. A soda company might add more carbonation, more sugar, or more caffeine to their drink to make it more appealing to consumers. They might call it super soda and charge a premium price for it. In the same way, some drugs are also designed to be more potent than others. They have extra effects that make them more addictive and dangerous. For example, a drug cartel might sprinkle some unknown chemicals on their weed to make it more powerful, psychoactive, and addictive. This is not a hypothetical scenario. This is exactly what the notorious MS-13 gang is doing in Honduras and elsewhere, where they have created a new strain of chemically altered wheat that is said to be more addictive than Esa mierda tiene químicos. Sí, pega, boom. A mí me dan ganas. Uy, claro, marica, si de pajarito de una lo sentí, el pringón. Sí pega duro. Claro. Eso eso no es normal. Traba y en bala, claro. Traba y en bala. Claro, se siente la, se siente la diferencia de una. Se siente la diferencia con normal. Claro, obviamente. This synthetic weed is their best seller, and they call it Tiburon, or shark in Spanish. Just like a shark, Tiburon is fast, powerful, and deadly. But what is Tiburon? And what is it that makes it so addictive, so much so, that its users would do anything to get their next fix? Let's find answers in this video. The origin of MS-13 dates back to the 1980s, when thousands of refugees from El Salvador fled to the United States to escape a brutal civil war in their country. Many of these refugees settled in Los Angeles, where they faced discrimination, poverty, and violence from other gangs, such as the 18th Street Gang, which was composed mostly of Mexican Americans. To protect themselves and their community, some of the Salvadoran immigrants formed their own gang, which they called Mara Salvatrucha, meaning Salvadoran Gang or Salvadoran Street Smart. The gang soon adopted the number 13, which is the numerical code for the letter M in the alphabet, and became known as MS-13. Over time, the MS-13 evolved into a vicious and violent criminal enterprise, notorious for its brutal acts of violence and involvement in various criminal activities such as robbery, extortion, kidnapping, murder, and illegal substance trafficking. MS-13 has a diverse membership, including people from Ecuador, Guatemala, Honduras, and Mexico, as well as some African Americans. However, most of its recruits are still of Central American origin, and its age range is between 11 and 40 years old. In the 1990s, the U.S. government launched a crackdown on MS-13 and deported many of its members back to their home countries, especially El Salvador. However, this did not stop MS-13, but rather helped them expand their network and influence. In El Salvador, MS-13 found a fertile ground for recruitment and growth as the country was still recovering from the civil war and suffering from poverty, corruption, and violence. So, with a weak government, a booming narco trade, and easy access to military-grade weapons, MS-13 quickly established its dominance and influence over the region. During this time, the gang also established connections with other gangs and criminal organizations, such as the Mexican Mafia, the Zetas, and the Sinaloa Cartel. By the 2000s, MS-13 had become a transnational phenomenon, with cells operating in different countries and regions, such as Central America, Mexico, the US, Canada, Europe, and Australia. According to the 2009 National Gang Threat Assessment, MS-13 is estimated to have 30,000 to 50,000 members and associate members worldwide, 8,000 to 10,000 of whom reside in the United States. However, other estimates put the number around 30,000 members internationally. With members all over the world, MS-13 has diversified its criminal portfolio, branching into new markets and activities, such as human trafficking, modern-day women's slavery, extortion, money laundering, and cybercrime. But perhaps the most lucrative and dangerous market that MS-13 entered was the synthetic drug market, which is the production and distribution of artificially made drugs, such as fentanyl, methamphetamine, and now Tiburon. Tú eres el encargado de este puesto. Sí, esta es la famosa Tiburon. Esta es la famosísima Tiburon. You see, Tiburon is not your ordinary weed. It is a chemically modified product that has been engineered to be more addictive than coke. 
according to its users and some experts. ¿Me puedes hablar algo de la que le dicen que es que tiburón, que es una nueva? Yo le echan un montón de cosas, pero aquí no la venden, no la distribuimos ni nada. ¿Esa la distribuye quien lo se merece? Sí. Ah, oh, ok. Tiburón comes in different varieties, but the most popular and expensive one is called crispy, which has a distinctive smell and taste. Crispy can fetch up to three times the price of regular wheat making it a very profitable commodity for MS-13. However, the exact composition and ingredients of Tiburon remain a mystery, as the gang keeps its formula a closely guarded secret. O sea, ¿tú sabes qué químicos le están echando esto? No, a nadie, pues. Hay personas que están ahí adentro del mar y no, no saben tampoco. ¿Y ustedes fuman de esta o no pueden fumarla? Sí, habemos mucho que consumir. Even though no one knows what this highly addictive substance is made of, what is known is that Tiburon has a devastating effect on its users, who range from young children to elderly people. Eso le gusta a la gente joven. A todo mundo, mayores, menores, de todo. No le echan el pulmón. Gente normal, gente que trabaja y todo. Tiburon addicts are so hooked on the substance and will do anything to get their fix, even if it means risking their lives or harming others. Y hay veces que es demasiado tarde. Sí. Aunque la droga no la controla uno, eso es mentira. Ella te controla. Ella lo controla uno. MS-13's monopoly over the Tiburon market in Honduras and elsewhere is not a coincidence. It is as a result of a strategic alliance with an exclusive supplier who provides the gang with the raw materials and the technology to produce the addictive substance. Even MS-13's rival gang, the 18th Street Gang, or Barrio 18, has not been able to access Tiburon and has to settle for the old cheap weed that sells for 30 lempiras, or about a dollar per pack. This gives MS-13 a huge advantage over Barrio 18 and allows the gang to dominate the narco scene in Honduras. The rise of Tiburon as a popular and profitable addictive substance in Honduras has been observed and analyzed. Tiburon is part of MS-13's evolving business model, which reflects the gang's adaptation to changing social and economic conditions. You see, MS-13 is no longer just a violent group that extorts money from people and businesses. It is now a sophisticated criminal enterprise that explores new opportunities and ventures in the legal and illegal spheres. MS-13 owns legitimate businesses such as car washes, barbershops, and clothing stores, as well as illegal substance trafficking, human smuggling, and money laundering. The gang's involvement in the Tiburon trade had even started before the COVID pandemic, but they were able to capitalize on the increased demand and prices of the substance during the crisis. One of the MS-13 members who spoke to Vice World News was El Ardila or the Squirrel. El Ardila revealed that MS-13 makes a fortune from selling Tiburon every day. He said, every day, we make around 8,000 to 10,000 lempiras, or about $328, according to him, the price of Tiburon has gone up from 30 lempiras, or a little above $1 to 100 lempiras, or $4 per pack, due to the high demand and scarcity of the substance. The demand was less, now it's 100, and we're making up to 10,000 a day. It's our best-selling drug. He then boasted that their arch enemy, the 18th Street Gang, has no access to Tiburon, and that MS-13 has a monopoly over the narco market in Honduras. They don't have the same supplier as us. They've stayed with the same old marijuana, with the 30 Lempira stuff. This wave of synthetic substances masquerading as weed has been sweeping across the streets, targeting the poor and the homeless in the streets of America. This is not a new phenomenon, but a persistent one that has been plaguing many communities for years. I hit it two times, and then I don't remember anything. I remember I woke up in the hospital. My throat hurt so bad, and I was like, why is my throat hurting? And it was because they had to put a tube down my throat because I couldn't breathe on my own. Like, they had to breathe for me. What is alarming is the lack of awareness and education among the users and the general public about the differences and dangers of these substances. Users can't be sure what chemicals have been sprayed onto the plant matter or in what quantity. Herbal incense has been found to contain everything from the opioid fentanyl to actual rat poison. Most people thought it was a recreational drug, a party drug, something that they could perhaps dip in and out of. But actually, nobody really knows what they're made up of and what structure they have and how they impact on the body. Synthetic weed, or spice, is not the same as natural weed. It is a concoction of various chemicals sprayed on the original plant material which can have unpredictable and harmful effects on the body and mind. The term synthetic marijuana is deceiving because these chemicals don't always act like cannabis. 
they can have unexpected side effects such as anxiety, paranoia, hallucinations, vomiting, violent behavior, even suicidal thoughts. Many gang members and substance users have said time and time again that Tiburon is more addictive and powerful than c itself. But then again, the exact ingredients and formula for making Tiburon are a closely guarded secret, as none of the dealers or users even know the specific chemicals that make the substance so potent. To date, the mystery behind the drug's addictive properties remains unsolved, but the MS-13 that produces and distributes this poisonous addictive substance is making a fortune from its sales. Away from its addictiveness and poisonous properties, the arrival of Tiburon has sparked a violent conflict between MS-13 and their arch-rival, the 18th Street Gang, as they fight over the control of the drug market and the territory. MS-13 has been aggressively pushing Tiburon into the 18th Street Gang's turf, sparking a series of clashes and attacks that have left hundreds of people dead or injured. The violence has also forced thousands of people to flee their homes and seek asylum in the United States, where they face another set of challenges and dangers. This has resulted in a vicious cycle of revenge and bloodshed, which has increased the insecurity and instability in the region. Like MS-13, the 18th Street Gang is one of the largest and most dangerous youth gangs in the Western Hemisphere. Both gangs have cells operating in various countries, from Central America to Canada, and are involved in various criminal activities. However, the 18th Street Gang has suffered a major setback in El Salvador, where a crackdown by the authorities has led to the arrest of thousands of its members, while others have gone into hiding or escaped the country. This has weakened its presence and power in El Salvador, but it still has a strong influence in Honduras and Guatemala, where it poses a serious threat to the residents. But unlike MS-13, the 18th Street Gang has decided to ban the sales of Tiburon, and stick to only selling natural weed. They have done this because they are concerned about the health effects of the synthetic substances on their users. O sea, aquí eso ya es como prohibido. Con otro aquí no, porque es onda, es algo que lo pierde y la perder la conciencia y todo. No trae mucho químico, es dañino para todo. ¿Tú crees que la MS está envenenando a la gente? Sí, yo creo que como trae mucho químico, le da daño a las hormonas del cerebro y las cosas de pulmones también y todo eso. According to the United Nations, the global market for synthetic drugs is a booming business that is worth around $400 billion, and as it seems, it's not slowing down anytime soon. This business is one that is highly competitive and risky, as it involves complex and clandestine operations, sophisticated and powerful players, and of course, constant and deadly conflicts among those who want a piece of the action. Basically, synthetic drugs are substances that try to replicate the effects of illegal drugs such as weed, ecstasy and LSD, but have different chemical structures. De manera preliminar, lo que podemos ver es que es, puede ser, puede llegar a ser cannabis mezclado con una sustancia de tipo anfetamínico, lo cual podría llamarse como una marca registrada o una denominación de origen de ese grupo criminal. They are also known as new psychoactive substances (NPS), and they are constantly changing to avoid legal restrictions. Some of these substances may claim to be legal safe and better than the illicit drugs they try to copy but don't be fooled by these false promises most synthetic drugs are neither legal nor safe and they can have unpredictable and dangerous consequences one of the main problems with the substances is that there is no way to know how much to take or what exactly is in them the packaging does not provide any dosage information and the chemical composition can vary widely even within the same batch of production moreover these drugs are not regulated or tested for quality or safety so there is no guarantee that they contain what they claim. Y casi nunca revelan la fórmula porque bajo esa fórmula es que es que ellos capturan al comprador, eh, la gente tampoco entiende los efectos y todo eso. Because synthetic drugs are relatively new, there is not much research on their effects on the human body and brain. However, some reports suggest that synthetic can have more harmful effects than natural ones. You see, any substance that alters your mind or mood should be considered a harmful substance, no matter how it is labeled or sold. I thought, hey, why not try it? And I smoked it and I remember getting like, like it's not even just a high, it's just like really mind alternating. And when you think of mind alternating drugs, it's literally just mind alternating. These substances can cause changes in your brain chemistry that affect your emotions, thoughts, impulses, and pleasure. Some of them can also distort your perception of reality and cause hallucinations or psychotic episodes. 
they interfere with the natural signals in your brain, called neurotransmitters, which are responsible for sending messages throughout your body. For example, stimulant substances like flaca or bath salts can boost the levels of norepinephrine, a neurotransmitter that stimulates your central nervous system and makes you feel alert, energetic, and excited. However, this also increases your heart rate, blood pressure, breathing, and body temperature, and reduces your need for sleep and food. Well, I first heard about it in high school. Um, some of my buddies were doing it, and I was smoking at the time, so they told me that there was something called synthetic that didn't come up on like drug tests. My parents were always on me. So I remember the first time I tried it, I was in my buddy's basement. It made me crazy. Substances like spice, on the other hand, can lower the levels of norepinephrine, a neurotransmitter that slows down your central nervous system and makes you feel calm and relaxed. However, this also decreases your alertness, coordination, and memory, and increases your appetite and sleepiness. Spice is six like a chuck it as an option to knock you out. Let's put it out to sit chill up. Do you know what? Do you know what? I wish I could go back to my bud because you know what? Yeah, spice. It's horrible. Oh, I woke up after the spice with vomit all over my bed and myself caught up. I know a kid who died of it. Couldn't, couldn't get his heart beating more. It was beating too fast, it just went and shut down. Synthetic drugs are very risky and their use can lead to erratic and violent behavior. According to the National Institute on Drug Abuse, people who abuse these substances may experience suicidal thoughts, self-injury, aggression, psychosis, and even life-threatening conditions, such as heart attacks, seizures, and organ damage. Y me dijeron que traía muchos químicos. Solo me dijo que traía formulina. ¿Ellos encontraron rastros de formulina en tu sangre? Sí, solo eso me dijo que la formulina era lo que me decía que tosiera mucho. Pero tuve que dejar, los doctores me dijo que o lo dejaba o podía pegarme un paro. Tú a la gente como que lo está haciendo, ¿qué les dirías si tuvieras a alguien enfrente? Bueno, que si tiene tiempo de dejarla, que la deje. Si no, la paro como a mí hasta que llegue al hospital. The risk of overdose is especially high, since the chemicals used to make these drugs may have deadly interactions in your body and brain. Many of these effects are short-lived, but if you use these drugs repeatedly and frequently, the changes they cause can become more permanent and damaging. Long-term abuse can lead to lasting physical and mental impairments. Before MS-13, the main players in the synthetic drug market were the Mexican cartels, such as the Sinaloa cartel and the Jalisco New Generation cartels. But much recently, the Los Chapitos faction of the Sinaloa cartel, led by the sons of the infamous drug lord El Chapo, is following in the footsteps of MS-13 with their fentanyl empire. The Los Chapitos have revolutionized the fentanyl trade by turning Mexico from a simple transit point for Chinese-made fentanyl into a major production center, according to information from several US and DEA sources. They have done this by setting up a network of hidden labs across Sinaloa and smuggling large quantities of precursor chemicals such as N-phenethyl-4 piperidone, NPP, and 4 anilino n phenethyl 4 piperidine ANPP from China. The profits they make from this operation are astronomical. With just $800 worth of precursor chemicals, these guys can make fentanyl pills or powder that can sell for as much as $640,000. This enormous amount of money has allegedly allowed them to bribe politicians and law enforcement officials and to hire a growing army of hitmen known as sicarios to protect their interests. The impact of their fentanyl business on the U.S. has been disastrous. Almost every eight minutes, an American dies from a fentanyl dose. As U.S. Deputy Attorney General Lisa O. Monaco stated at a press conference in Washington in 2021, Dose deaths in the U.S., mostly caused by fentanyl, reached almost 107,000, showing the gravity of the crisis. By selling Tiburon, MS-13 hopes to gain a stronger position in the illicit drug market and establish its presence in different regions. This drug trade enables them to accumulate significant financial resources, which they can use to fund their criminal activities and to recruit new members, increasing their influence in the criminal underworld. But Tiburon and fentanyl are only two examples among hundreds of deadly synthetic drugs that are more dangerous than coke and that are causing havoc in society today. The spread of these synthetic substances has become a pressing concern as they continue to have devastating effects on communities and individuals around the world. 
Have you, or anyone close to you, had an experience with any of these synthetic substances? Please feel free to share your stories and experiences with us in the comments below. And if you have enjoyed this video, please do well to give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more videos like this. Thank you for watching guys. Until next time, please stay safe.